Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and welcome to episode one of Gearbox 2.0. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about light metering, color metering, and this little guy for iOS devices, the Lumu Power, so let's get started. So why did I pick this subject for the first episode of Gearbox 2.0? I picked it because it's relevant to video production, filmmaking, and photography. And even though it is a deep subject and there's a lot to cover, I thought I would at least start here and then we'll come back to it a few times or maybe more than a few times on Gearbox. So let's start with the basics, light metering. There are two basic types of light metering that we use in production, reflective and incident metering. Reflective metering is when we have a camera system and basically every DSLR mirrorless camera on the market has reflective metering. There's a meter inside of here. It's taking a reading of the light that's reflecting off of whatever the camera is pointed to, your scene, your subject matter, whatever that is. We're generally doing an average where it's taking a look at the whole scene. It's looking at all of the exposure values, luminance values really, of what we are talking about within the scene. And then it is making a decision in terms of how you should change your settings in your camera, your shutter, your aperture, your ISO gain, meaning your, your sensitivity, to make sure that you have correct exposure. Now there's a second type of reflective metering. Um, this is a light meter here from Sekonic, and I'm just gonna go ahead and attach here this attachment, which is called a spot meter. And you can set up your mirrorless or your DSLR cameras for spot metering as well. And this is more laser pinpointing. So you're pointing that reflective meter at something. It is giving you a reading, but within a certain number of degrees, five degrees, one degree, whatever that's gonna be. And it's saying, based on what you want to expose within that particular place of the frame, here's what you should do so you can get correct exposure. Or not here's what you should do, but here's what you're getting in terms of under or overexposed, and then you change your settings, shutter, aperture, or your ISO to get that correct exposure. But when you're using spot metering, one of the things that you really need to understand is that the camera is looking for this. It's looking for middle gray or 18% gray. So ideally, you are pointing it at something that is within that range for you to get the correct reading so that when you make changes in your camera, you are going to not only get correct exposure, but also that full dynamic range of your camera. Now, if you pointed the spot meter at black or you pointed it at white, and you started to change your settings in your camera, you're not gonna be happy with the settings you're gonna get because it's gonna to try to have you change your camera settings so that your black looks like middle gray or that your white looks like middle gray. So just something to think about. Okay, so that's reflective light metering. And again, I'll get into that more in other episodes of Gearbox. The other type of light metering that we use is called incident light metering. So instead of taking a reading of what's reflected off of what your camera's pointed at, you're actually walking to a particular place within your scene and you're taking a reading of the light falling on that particular thing. Um, generally, we'll use this dome for that reading because it is representing a three-dimensional object, a person, an animal, whatever it is in your scene. Though we could change it and you can change it to take a reading with a flat reading here. So this would be great if, let's say, for instance, you were metering something like a painting in a gallery and you wanted to make sure that you were exposing correctly for that. But again, you need to understand that what the meter is doing is it's trying to tell you how to expose properly for middle gray. Now, it's not that we have to have middle gray in that scene. It's just assuming that the information that it's giving to you on the meter when it's telling you something is basically so that you can get a correct reading for middle gray and that dynamic range. So you just have to understand that. Again, we can get deeper into that. There's ways you can calibrate these meters so that they take into consideration the fact that your middle gray point might be different if you're shooting in log versus 709 or however you have your camera system set up. 
but that's for other episodes. In the, in the old days, when I was growing up as a kid, we would basically have two general color temperatures. Inside light was warmer and was around 3200 Kelvin, 2900 Kelvin, even maybe warmer than that in terms of the Kelvin temperature. And then outside light generally ranged anywhere from about 5600 all the way to 15,000 Kelvin. That's our daylight. But the fixtures themselves were generally at around 3200 Kelvin or around 5600 Kelvin, which would be tungsten and daylight. Well, today all bets are off. We've got fluorescent fixtures that not only are somewhere in between 3200 and 5600 Kelvin, but sometimes, especially with commercial fixtures, they tend to skew very green. We have LED fixtures and many different versions of those. Some of them are what we call bicolor, so they have tungsten and they have daylight uh, phosphors on top of the LEDs and we can tune different color temperatures into them. And now we have a trend where we've got lights that give us color. And not just color temperature on the Kelvin scale, but we can go in there and we can put in hue, saturation, intensity. We can actually mimic gels and all of that kind of stuff. And what this means is that when we're using color meters, this is the C700 from Sekonic. This is their Spectro Master Meter. That what we want to do is we want to get an accurate reading of all of the information that's coming from those fixtures. And the thing to understand about those fixtures is that they don't have the same color spectrum as, let's say, this hot light, this quartz halogen light here, which if I put a new bulb into it will pretty much give me full color spectrum, rock solid at about 3200 Kelvin. That's just not the case with these modern LED fixtures. So if we were using an older color meter, which had receptors for red, green, and blue, we wouldn't be getting accurate readings, which is why things like the C700 exist. They also give us lots of information in terms of color rendering index and TLCI so that we really know what the color spectrum is, where there might be gaps, and also where there might be problems with the light. So now that we've talked about light meters and color temperature meters, it's probably important to talk about why you would use a light meter of any kind in your production when we have things like histograms and waveform monitors. And here's why. So that waveform monitor or that histogram are fantastic in terms of helping us understand our exposure values when we're looking at the scene. But they're showing us that in a two-dimensional representation of what the camera is looking at. There's no three-dimensional representation. So here are a couple of examples in terms of three-dimensionality and using a light meter. Number one, you want to make sure that you are metering your subject matter and your background at a different ratio. And you want to make sure that that's consistent. So let's just say that we're doing an average of a 2.8 on our subject matter, but we want our background to be two stops darker. That would be an f1.4. So what we can do is we can make sure that when we're setting up our lights, that we're metering for a 2.8 and for a 1.4 on the background. And the meter lets us do that very, very easily. Now let's say we take that concept another step forward and we say we're shooting a documentary or a feature film in different locations and you either have the same director of photography or cinematographer. Well, what you can do is you can not only give information about the fixtures you're using and the distance of those fixtures from your subject matter, your modifiers and everything else, but you can give information of those light ratios in terms of contrast ratio between one side of the person's face, key and fill, background, foreground, middle ground, whatever it's going to be. And then with a light meter, you can quickly and easily set up that space with those readings for repeatability. So it's not just ratios and getting the ratios that you want, it's repeatability. And this is really where the magic of a meter comes in handy, especially an incident meter, because you can walk your space and just take readings all over the place and make sure that you're getting consistent results. So now that I've thoroughly geeked out on light meters and color temperature meters and the SpectroMaster C700 and all of that fun stuff, it's now time to talk about a tool that, at least if you're getting into metering, could be something that you might want to take a look at. If you have an iOS device, this is a Lumu Power. And what's cool about it is that it is both an incident meter and also a color temperature meter. The app can also do some other things. 
and it is under $300 US. So we take a look at this light meter here. This is 300 plus dollars, 350 plus US dollars. We take a look at this meter here. This is well over $1,000 US. So while they're tools that I'm using in my productions and they're gonna give me a lot more information than I might be getting from Lumu Power and the app, this is a very accurate tool. I've compared it to using these in terms of the information I'm getting related to color using different fixtures and also my readings as an incident light meter and I'm very happy with what I'm getting. So it's very easy to use. You just turn on your device, you plug in the Lumu Power to the lightning port, and then you're gonna actually get something that asks you whether or not you want to use that hardware, and then it will launch the actual app itself. So number one, I'm gonna go into the main settings, and one of the most important things that you wanna do is you wanna turn on dark mode. When you're using this meter, if you're not in dark mode, let me just show you what happens and I go into my metering options, then the screen is gonna be bright. And if we're using the meter on this side of the camera, then that illuminance is gonna be taken into consideration in terms of your metering. Now, we go into our main options here, and let's take a look at illuminance. So first thing to notice here with all of these settings is what side of the Lumu Power are you using for your readings? So for illuminance, we can go into our parameters and we can do illuminance readings in either Lux or in foot candles. But when we're actually doing that, we're using the flat side of the Lumu Power, which is this side here. Now we can just swap it if we want to, so that if we wanted to look at the screen like this while we're taking our readings, we could. And now we have our Lux reading. I can switch that over again to foot candles and it will show that to me in foot candles. So now we're gonna go over here to photo ambient, and now we're using it as a traditional incident meter, but it's gonna be using the dome side. So either what I have to do is take a reading here and look at the screen over here, or I have to switch over the dome to this side. Now that's not giving us the same functionality we would get with a standard light meter where we can actually rotate it but that may be a limitation of that lightning port and the way hardware has to be designed, I'm not sure. But here we have our basically incident meter here. When we're metering, we can also go in here and we can make an exposure value compensation change, which can be very handy. And I'll just step out of there and then we can just go ahead and take a reading here and it's saying that for the light that's falling here, exposing for middle gray with this light, it's saying I should be setting my aperture to an f2.2. And then obviously what I'll have to do is make changes if I'm looking for a different aperture for what I'm shooting. Let's say, for instance, I changed my ISO to 800. It will automatically update and tell me that I would be setting my camera to a 3.2. If I changed my shutter speed here to a different shutter, then it would also tell me that I would be changing my aperture in terms of getting that correct exposure. So you can see that all of those things, once you take your reading, happen in real time. You can even set this up in your parameters to do a continuous reading if, for instance, you're walking a space. So when we're in Cine Video, it's a little bit different. Let's go ahead and take a look at our parameters, and there are quite a few of them. One of the key ones here is whether or not you're setting this to shutter time which would be shutter speed or shutter angle. If you're using a digital cinema camera, you'll use shutter angle most of the time. If you're using a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you might be setting that to shutter time. So here we are, we're at 24 frames per second and you can obviously change that. We're gonna go ahead and change the shutter speed and we'll change that to 1 50th of a second, which would be pretty standard if we were shooting at 24 and then I can go in here and I can change my ISO. Let's just say I'm shooting in the 640, and then they go ahead and take my reading here, and it says that I should be at an F5 for that. And again, dynamic in terms of changes here. So if I go to 1600 ISO, I'm gonna go ahead and stop down to an eight. And then down here, not only do we have that exposure value compensation, but in both the photo and also in this video mode, we can go in here and we can add a filter. That's very common when I'm shooting outdoors that'll add four stops of ND. So I can actually put that into there as part of the meter reading and it will consider that as part of the reading. So now it's saying, oh, four stops of ND. 
On here at 1600 ISO, you need to shoot at an f2. But again, if I started to change my settings on the camera system, it would dynamically update the information there. So now we're going to go over here to color temperature, and you'll notice again that that icon says that we should be using the flat side for our readings. So let me just go ahead and take a reading there of that light. Okay, and we can see that there is no green or magenta shift there. But I can also go into my parameters and I can make other changes. For instance, for my green magenta, I can say how many steps I'm taking into consideration when I'm doing that. And that'll have a lot to do with your fixture or the application that you're working with in terms of how many steps. And they keep updating the app so this can become even more accurate based on all of the differences that you have with the different light fixtures in terms of especially ones that do have settings for green magenta shifts. So really powerful in terms of that. And then the last thing over here is that we can go in here to the chromaticity setting and we can actually take a reading again with the flat side. So let me just go ahead and take a reading here and it's going to tell me my correlated color temperature. It's going to tell me my Lux reading here and it's also going to tell me with XY coordinates where exactly that color is falling in terms of color spectrum. So not everything that you would be seeing again in terms of this meter or this meter, but an incredibly powerful tool for something that's less than $300 US, first and foremost for ratios and repeatability, and number two, so that you can accurately take readings of your color temperature, see if there are any shifts, and then you can match all of your lights in your environment so that when you get into post, it's not just a big pain in the you know what. So there you have it. That's the first episode of Gearbox 2.0 and I loved geeking out and hopefully you learned something about metering and about this cool tool and at least that it exists and is out there when you may need it in your productions. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out the links below for the equipment that I talked about in this episode. Any support that you give helps make future episodes possible of Gearbox and other content here on the C47 YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.